Dharan may tell us uh, uh, there are so many different types of yoga. So uh, how is it bhakti yoga different from others? Tell us something about bhakti yoga. Okay. So yes, there are so many different yogas. This is for sure. And I think it's because, you know, God is so amazing. He knows we're all very different and we like different things. We're not all attracted to the same stuff. Um, so in that way, he makes himself available. That's the beauty of him. But in the Bhagavad Gita, it actually speaks about, you know, Krishna takes you through different stages. The first six chapters, he takes you through karma yoga. And karma yoga is about, you know, giving your actions handing over and surrendering your actions to the Lord so that basically we're not sitting and we're not thinking that we are doing everything because when we think that we're doing everything, we're building up more karma, but we're basically handing this over and we're saying, okay, whatever the results are of all of my actions, you deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. So whatever actions I do, I hand it over to you. So I don't have to worry about the fruits of my actions, right? This is karma yoga. And karma yoga also has to do with um, loka sangraha. So doing things for humanity, what you're doing now, Puja, is karma yoga. You're helping so many of us and so many viewers um, because you feel that this is helping to benefit everybody, right? So this is doing an action for the benefit of everybody. So this benefits us as well. So this is karma yoga. Bhakti yoga, then you have jnana yoga, which has to do with introspection, uh, which has to do with looking at oneself, which has to do with analyzing oneself. This is also a very difficult path. But why bhakti yoga is so beautiful for me and why it's spoken of as in the Bhagavad Gita, I think it's 9.2, uh, chapter 9.2, is because he speaks about it as it being the king of yogas, because it is so simple, and because it has to do with our love relationship with God. So Krishna is basically saying, don't worry about it. Let me take care of it. Just love me. Just think of me, just chant my names. Whatever you do, keep doing your actions, but think of me. And this is really more bhakti yoga where, where it's the idea of sharanagati, where you basically are taking everything that you have and you're saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix my life, but you do help me, help me. And it's taking this and it's handing this over to the Lord so that he can lift us up because we don't have the power to do something like this, but he does. So There's a very, it's very beautiful. There's um, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the last chapter, chapter 18, I think verse 66, he says, um, Sarva Dhamma Paritya Jamamikam Charanantraja. What he's saying is that he says, Surrender to me, love me, and don't worry about everything. I will take care of all of your sins and I will wipe away all of your sins. You basically just think of me and make this your main aim. <laughs> so it sounds like a simple thing to do mm -hmm. and it sounds you know when you when you think about it it's like yes of course this makes such sense mm -hmm. but the journey of making the lord the the real thing that we want and to be our only real desire is is a is a major journey <laughs> but with his grace it's very possible very possible so basically you have to 
surrender and love him completely with all your heart mind and soul and just think that you know he'll take over he knows what to do that is that is bhakti yoga you know it's so mm-hmm. simple guruji always speaks about it it's about our relationship with him and every single one of us have got a completely different relationship with god my relationship with him is completely different to yours because our journeys are different our souls are different you know and that is why it's so beautiful when i when i see guruji looking at people especially in places like darshan it's so magnificent because the respect and the love that he has for every single person is mind blowing because he sees the soul and he sees this aspect of god inside of everybody fully and when you see that in somebody it must be such an incredible thing 